I'm so excited about today's show because it's the long-awaited Count's Fritters. You're watching The Bear Pantry Show. So what Joe has there in the bowl, and, and we just kind of put it in some warm water to make it thaw out, is one pound of Count's. Show it, Joe. It's quite a bit half for a pound. And by the way, the counts is very expensive. It's about $15 a pound. So, and we had to go to a, like a, a fish market in LA to get this count. So we're gonna start by chopping up the counts into small pieces. And we're gonna use half of this amount because that's what the recipe calls for. But of course you can use the whole thing and do a double recipe. But we're going to chop this into small pieces and then get it in the blender or the magic bullet with some of the other ingredients. Let's begin. See how Joe is cutting it into these, um, I'd say, medium-sized pieces? Well, of course, if you don't have a blender or a magic bullet, you can always use like the cleaver and just kind of mince it as fine as you can go. You know, and I've found throughout the years that a lot of people, when they give you conks fritters, They'll use a lot of the water off of the counts that they use to blend the counts with and they kind of shortchange you and they don't give you any real counts in the fritter, but not us. This is one of the feast meals that my book speaks about. You know, my book talks about uh, foods for season of feast or famine. This is one of the feast ones. So I'm going to let Joe continue to cut and we're going to get it in the magic bullet. So while Joe's getting some water to add to the magic bullet to put in the counts to blend it, I want to go ahead and show you some of the other ingredients that we're going to put inside the Kong's fritters. I've measured out two teaspoons of baking powder, two teaspoons of salt, two teaspoons of black pepper, one tablespoon of fricado, and this can be replaced by paprika or paprika, however you know it by, one cup of all-purpose flour, and we're going to add our favorite diced onions and cilantro to this mixture. I don't know why it is, but for me here at the Bear Pantry Show, I kind of do everything with onions and cilantro. So let's get ready. Let's uh, go over to Joe and him getting the counts ready. And then we're going to start adding these ingredients. And I, I want to show you something about the ricotto. I don't know how close the camera can come in, but see the name right there? Ricardo. A lot of people have been asking me if it's Ricardo, which is the Spanish name for a boy or if it's ricotto. And what this is, is a spice made from the achiote. And I have a, a little bit of the history about it in my book. But this can also, this is the powder form and we have the form that's like a block of clay. And this can be replaced by paprika or paprika. Joe is adding a little bit of water to this little bit of counts. We're not putting the whole thing because we don't want to jam up the magic bullet. We're going to get the cross blade right now. The reason we add the water is for exactly what I just said. We don't want to jam up the blade. We need some kind of liquid to blend the counts with. So let me get the cross blade. This is the second batch of counts that Joe put in the magic bullet. And I'm just adding a little bit of the diced onion, a little bit of the cilantro, and I'm adding some of my favorite, um, those yellow chili peppers, because I can't cope with habanero. It's too hot for me, and I really want to enjoy this meal. But I want to show you. Look at these little habanero peppers that my dad grew in his garden. We don't know why it doesn't want to get any bigger, but this would be awesome to put in there if you guys like it really, really hot. But for me, I'm going to put the yellow peppers because I want to enjoy this meal today. So we're going to go ahead and put on back the cross blade and we're gonna grind up all the ingredients in this. So I'm scraping, I'm using a spatula to get every last little bit of my counts, because I don't wanna waste any of this expensive seafood, right? And so here's Joe with the black pepper. And of course this stuff is subjective, you can put it to your taste, but we've kind of measured it out and know that this is what we like. Here's the ricotta, the powder ricotta, uh, ricotta or the um, paprika. Here's the baking powder, which is very important to the Kong's fritter. And the salt, Joe. And here's the salt. And then Joe will tell us, we're going to put that one cup of flour in this, and we're going to see if it's too thick or just right for us to start frying these fritters. Go ahead and get the flour, Joe. 
add it a little bit at a time. So put it off to the side so we don't block the view. Put it off to the side. So there we go. Adding the flower and I'm really happy for my son Jory who's running the camera because he's my best camera person but he hates the smell of seafood and this is punishment for him to do this video but not for us because we enjoy fritters. Joe, do you think we're going to need to add water to this? A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. See how thick this is? You don't want it to be this thick. But I have Joe in here helping me with the fritters today because this is his recipe. This is something that he does really, really well. So that's why I have him in here. So let me turn it over to him to add some water. Because I don't want to over add water. And so mix it, Joe. See how I'm ordering him around in the kitchen? <laughs> no, actually, we're kind of competitive in the kitchen, but only on certain meals. Joe, you want to turn it towards the camera? <laughs> Let me hold it. Do we need more water? No? Okay, you guys see how stiff that is? That's your guide right there. And so we're going to get some oil heated up on, in the skillet on the stove, and we're going to get some of these fried. So let's move over to the stove. I put a little bit of canola cooking oil in this or green skillet here. And I didn't measure how much I put because the oil also is going to be according to what size pot you use. If you use a large pot, you, you're going to use more oil. If you use a smaller pot, you use less oil. And so this is one of the smaller pots and we probably can't fry but one fritter at a time in this, but it's okay because we don't have a whole lot to fry. So while the pot is getting heated, Joe is finding his utensil that he's going to use to measure out each fritter. Joe used like a regular um, tablespoon that you would uh, serve with and he put a little drop of the fritter in the oil and now he's using an egg spatula and he's squishing it. Be careful when you're doing this so that this doesn't kind of pop up and burn you. So he's just kind of flattening the fritter with the spatula and I think we could get probably get another one in there but let's watch this one cook for a quick second and we're gonna cook this on both sides and it's gonna cook rather quickly so Joe is getting another one prepared on his tablespoon let's see see just a regular tablespoon and he just puts a blob in there that's why it has to be kinda thick when you make the fritter and he squished squished it with the egg spatula so it can get flattened and he's going to allow it to cook until he flips them on the other side and this is what we're going to continue to do until that batter is used up and then we'll see how many fritters we get then I'll tell you more or less how, mu how many people they should serve so he flipped the first one and the other one's going and I'm going to get a colander for him to drain these in so the first, the two brown, golden brown looking ones in there have been cooking on both sides for two minutes a piece. And Joe's gonna remove them now from the oil. The third one's not ready yet because that just went in. So you can see if you had a bigger skillet, you could probably put a whole lot in there and cook them all at the same time. But I took the easy way out today. I didn't want to waste too much of my oil. So those two are ready to come out. And that one's gonna be allowed to cook a little bit longer because it's two minutes on each side that these have to cook. So when we come back, I'm gonna show you our finished product on a platter and Joe and I are gonna start enjoying. Can you guys see that Joe and I have matching shirts? We went to a t-shirt show in January and they gave us these matching shirts and it had the, the pan with the bacon and we thought it would be so awesome. We saved them so we could do Kung's Fritter video and wear the same thing, but our kids just hate it when we wear matching clothes, so we're not allowed to leave the house in these outfits, okay? And it's so funny today because you should, she, you should see Jory behind the camera. He has his nose <laughs> like this because he can't stand the smell of the counts. But I promise you, if you're a seafood lover, you're going to love this. And you guys know what counts are, right? They're the same as abalone. And you know when you go to the beach and you pick up that big old shell and you put it to your ear and you can hear the ocean come in? That's the thing that we're eating right now. And it's a specialty. We love it in Belize, but unfortunately, some people don't like seafood and they're not going to like this. So uh, let me let Joe do his thing and I'll show you the finished product. It 
Is that another fritter? That's another one. All right. So in a video coming up soon, I guess we're going to be doing kong soup, right? That's right. Joe is a pro in the kitchen. By the way, you guys have heard me say before that he taught me how to cook the majority of the meals that I know how to cook. So I have to give him some credit and some props today, thanking him for being such a master mentor. Here we have our finished product. We got a baker's dozen. We got like 13 fritters, some of them smaller than others, some of them bigger. And so definitely this will not feed 13 people or a dozen people because these go pretty fast. They're kind of like an appetizer. The kids that I have that eats it, um, they dip it in ranch dressing. You could do honey mustard. You could do it without dressing. This is just make, making it Americanized. And if you can see right here, Joe broke this one open to show you how the inside look. It's cooked. It's wonderful and tasty. It's crispy. You want to kind of eat these when they're hot off the presses. You don't want to wait till they get cold. And so I would say maybe this will feed five, pe five people because when it comes to these type of delicacies, we are greedy up in this place. <laughs> so there you have it, Kung's Fritters. You guys have been requesting this for so long. I don't know, you even made me nervous when I was doing this recipe today because one, it's not my recipe, it's Joe's. And two, the counts are so expensive for me to have to go and try to replace it if it comes out bad. I'm not talking about the recipe, I'm talking about the video because sometimes we have such false starts with the microphone and the camera and everything else. But I'm so happy to do this. We're kind of excited. Um, I want to give a shout out to my cousin Megan and my aunt Kathy because this is their favorite recipe. And it, I'm sorry that they have to be all the way in Utah while I'm in California and they can't have none of this. But I hope you enjoy watching this video. I want to thank you guys so much for subscribing to the channel and I also want to thank you for picking up the book. This recipe is in the book along with a lovely little story that I tell about Joe and my uncle, my uncle Les, which is Megan's dad, who has since passed on about 10 years ago, and this recipe. So my, my, my book has heartwarming um, little stories in there about my mom's side of the family. So until I see you guys again, take care.